Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Unscripted Coding. We are going to start a brand new project and as usual, there's gonna be a ton of mistakes. And this time I'm even gonna preface this by saying it is possibly the dumbest possible way of doing this, but there's kind of a rhyme and reason to what I'm doing. So today our project is to try and convert an EPUB file into audio. Uh, EPUB files, for those of you who don't read a lot, are digital books, um, something like this. Uh, you have um, your table of contents, you have text. Um, basically, it's, it's for your Kindles and Kobos. They strip out all of this uh, fluff and just have the text, some basic images, and some basic formatting. It is... It's a format for text, and what I want to do is change it into speech, MP3 or WAV files or some sort of audio that you can record. Now, I just wanted to show you guys uh, that yes, I'm aware there are all sorts of apps uh, on Android, on iOS that do this, but I wanted to play you a quick clip right here. Um, this is the UK accent. I'm just using that as a standard, and I find that they're usually pretty good um, across the board with UK accents. So, here we go. Data breaches of epic magnitude hit the news every week. Leading media outlets, in leading media outlets including The Economist and The New York Times, devote front pages and editorial that is using the Google text-to-speech engine, and you know, it's, it's not bad, but it's obviously very robotic. What's interesting is that Microsoft Edge, built into all your Windows 10 devices, I think has by far the best text-to-speech engine. It beats out even the Siri voices on iOS by, I think, a landslide. So let's just hear a quick clip here. This chapter provides an introduction to the subject of protection of information about individuals. I individuals. In the United States and other countries, laws in this area are known as privacy law, or sometimes data privacy or information privacy law. In the European Union, Union and EU and other countries, laws in this area are known as data protection law. The discussion... Okay, um, so just from those quick clips, I probably should have picked the same starting place, but from those quick uh, trials... I think Microsoft Edge wins hands down. Um, let me just pull it up here. This is the Microsoft Mia online natural language. Um, and I, you know, I, I just think it, it, they've done a really good job. Now, um, Azure Neural Text Speed. You can use classic APIs to do this. In fact, if you use their website, you find the same uh, voices. So there's Mia, Neural. This chapter provides an introduction to the subject of protect. This chapter provides an introduction to the subject of protection of information about individuals. Um, so it's available, and if you use their API, you can build it pretty quickly, but the pricing is quite expensive. Um, over here, the neural uh, text-to-speech, you get 0.5 million characters free per month. I've estimated, and there's probably a better way of counting it, but I've estimated that this book is about 20, 25 million uh, characters. I haven't done a really good count, but it is a lot. And when we start putting $16 per million characters, that starts to be like 100, 200 bucks just to transfer this one uh, book. So uh, it's being offered free on, on Edge. Why don't we move it directly from, uh, why don't I just leave the computer running for a few days uh, overnight and, and record it? And that's basically the idea here. It is the dumbest, most 
inefficient way possible, but my computer is not running at night. I'm not doing anything at night, so I might as well have it try and generate this audio for me through Edge. So that is the plan. Um, I even took a first step here. Um, I was using an EPUB reader, but the problem is they split up the file into you know individual chapters. I'd have to try and automate you know, page flipping, chapter flipping. Uh, instead, what I did is I just searched EPUB to HTML converter, took the first link and converted it to an HTML file. So let me just move this here. And we have one giant file with all the text going all the way down. Uh, my first step is really to clean this file up really quickly. Um, what I think I'm going to do is uh, get rid of the footnote. So one thing I found when I was listening to it is the most jarring thing is hitting over here. It'll say something like, for each computer device, linking the device more closely to an identifiable person, dot 30, the increasing, uh, increasingly used variation version, um, like there is a jarring interruption and this is a book with a lot of footnotes. So I'm okay with the headers, the, the numbers here, 1.46, 1.5, that might even help me orient, uh, orientate myself in, in the chapters, but the footnotes are a real problem. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all the footnotes. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump right into it. You guys uh, keep watch. Sadly, I lost just a few minutes of footage. That's why you don't see my face at the bottom of the corner there. Um, where we're at is we uh, remove the footnotes. We, use, we used jQuery to do it, and um, that is probably the easiest way to do it. There's, you know, you can regular expression it, find it other ways, but we remove the index at the bottom. We remove the footnotes numbers and the footnotes themselves. I think that last one, maybe I may want to put that back in in the future. I'm not quite sure. We'll see how that goes. Um, the next bit is um, I didn't, I had no clue how I was going to record, um, you know, what comes on my speaker for Windows. And so what I did was uh, I Googled it and I came across this thing that uses Pi Audio. So I just, pasted it into my um, Visual Studio code. I set up a virtual environment um, for Python and we're ready to go. I have not tested this. I have not run this in any way, but that's kind of the next step is we're just gonna record the audio.
Okay, uh, I am at a place where I am happy to say we're done and I'll leave it on overnight. Um, what have I done? Um, so one of the things is Pi Audio. That's what we're using to record the information. And what I found the first time I was recording was that the sound sounded muffled. Um, it's pretty dumb because what it is, is it's using my microphone that is up over here um, and picking up the speaker sound coming from my speakers. So obviously it was muffled because it's not actually recording what's coming out of the speakers. Um, what I had to do was wire up basically setting your speakers, your uh, computer's output to be the same as the input. Now, if you take a look at some of the research I was doing, um, mostly people use a stereo mixer. Um, that's a... Um, Let's pull up this image right here. Uh, the stereo mix, and a lot of computers would have that. I don't, but if you take a scroll through uh, my playback and recording devices, I am obviously not running a standard setup. I have um, about a dozen uh, different, I have like a dozen different recording and playback devices, partly because I'm fiddling with a lot of devices, partly because I have this on uh, YouTube. But one of the things that I have installed previously is this VB cable thing. Um, this basically does the same thing. It allows um, you to set your computer uh, playback device to be an input cable, and then you can record the output. Um, what happens is I can't hear anything because the computer is passing it to this other place and then uh, this software passes it back through the microphone. Um, that hopefully made a bit of sense. Um, okay, uh, so what else is there? Um, we've cleaned up the file, the text, so we have here this giant text and what I'm going to do probably tonight or over the weekend is just play it back and record it through Python. Now I was thinking and you may have seen a bit of uh, my searching here, I was thinking that I would try and automate this process so that it would start and stop automatically. Um, over here they teach you how to do it. Um, how you can start the playback when you hear the voice, how you stop the playback afterwards. And if I was doing a series of files, that would make a lot of sense. I would say open a file, do various things on my computer, but Edge isn't open for you to automate. So I'd have to have something to click the play button to double click another file, and it just isn't worth the hassle of what I'm trying to do. And so what I'm going to do is um, record it overnight, see where we go. Um, and in retrospect, I don't even think I needed to have this. Um, if you just download Audacity, Um, that would be able to record your microphone. So you don't need to fiddle with this Python thing at all. Um, okay, well, hopefully this is helpful in trying to figure out how you would tackle a project. Like I have a very practical output I want from this and there's a whole bunch of different paths that we could have gone and gone, pat, uh, gone down, but uh, because of the fact that I have a really nice clean text file now, this is the way that makes the most sense. But if for some reason you were doing like a dozen PDF files that aren't easily merged, um, you can definitely see why you would want to automate this. So um, that's it. And uh, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you didn't, uh, please do leave me a comment. Let me, let me know your constructive feedback. So thanks. See you guys next time. 
Oh, uh, I'm just gonna follow this up really quickly. This is Audacity. Do install it, it's a really good piece of software. You go into Windows WAS, WAS API, and you can uh, select your playback device, hit the big record button, and you're good to go. So um, I don't have a normal setup. That's why I cut this off fairly early. Uh, but Audacity is a really, really easy way for you to do what I was trying to do.